Look, here's my hard hat. That's too small for my big hat. What are you looking for down here? I am looking for a little booklet. It's my portfolio, but I don't know where it is. This one says Joanne. Here is my portfolio. Look, <laughs> it's me. A bunch of kaleidoscope. <laughs> too far away. This is what got me into cancer. This, this tiny little booklet is what got me a job at Gensler. And I thought today we'll go over the entire thing, which is like, I don't know, 10 pages, <laughs> and explain to you how to make a really simple architecture portfolio that can still get you a job without being crazy fancy. So this video is probably best for you if you are the type of architect that is more technical, um, that probably has more experience in doing construction documents than doing photorealistic renderings. So if you're a designer, if you're like a 3D renderer, you're like crazy about those kind of things, this portfolio is not for you. First, let me give you a backstory of what happened when I was job searching. This was back in 2014. I wasn't really happy at my old job, so I was looking to get a new job. And back then, the definition of my dream job was to work in a large international firm in New York City. So I spent a lot of time researching anything from resume to LinkedIn to portfolio to interviews. I was reading it all, I was learning it all, I was absorbing all the knowledge to try to find this job. But I realized that there wasn't a lot of resources on how to make a portfolio for someone like me. Most of the portfolios that I was looking at at that time was either for recent graduates to show off their graphic skills or they're very design focused, very rendering heavy. I had about three years of experience and I was mostly doing technical drawings like CD sets and I'm actually very good at construction documents. Just. FYI, <laughs> if you're more technical and you have a few years of experience, I think this really simple portfolio is, works really great for you because this portfolio and of course all the other things that you have to do like your resume, your LinkedIn profile got me four interviews and three job offers at that time. So I would say the conversion rate was pretty high, four interviews, three job offers on this tiny little booklet. And the best part is, it's incredibly simple. So let's get right to it. Let's talk about the format. This portfolio is more like a work sample, really simple. I'm a firm believer that once you have a few years of experience and you're not applying to be a renderer or like a crazy designer, you don't really need a really elaborate design portfolio anymore. I know most people would probably disagree me on this one because architects just love design portfolios, but hear me out. I think that the full blown out, like crazy looking portfolios are overrated. When you first graduated from school, a portfolio is a great way to show your skills, like your graphic skills, your presentation skills, your um, rendering skills. If you already have a few years of experience, if you've been working, your actual experience is more important than your portfolio. And I find that a really simple work sample is the perfect format to show your experience across different projects. So here's the format, it's really simple, obviously. Eight and a half by 11, it's just a letter size. Some people like to make their portfolio like 11 by 17 or even bigger, but I like the smaller letter size format because first it's just lighter to carry around. I mean, I was interviewing in New York City, walking around in my high heels <laughs> in the heat, not having to carry around a giant like you know those 18 by 24 portfolio cases really really make a difference it's also easier to print out so if you send this to someone through an email when you're applying for a job and they want to print out your portfolio 
It's super easy. It doesn't take up a lot of ink. So next, I want to show you the actual content that goes into this portfolio. I just put printed out my resume. I made a two-page resume. So the first page and the second page was also part of my resume. I actually don't recommend a two-page resume anymore. If you only have a few years of experience like I did, one page is perfectly fine. So after your resume, you want to go into your portfolio. I just made a template on InDesign and I just put one project on one page. I think there's like eight projects in here that I picked, that I worked on, that I really like. I think it represents my skills and my design the best. So I just put them on like one project per page. Let's go through the content one by one so I can explain to you what should go into this really super simple portfolio. First, you need a project name. This one was called Teacher's Village Building 8. Under that, I put in some really simple information, your project type. So this was a mixed juice apartment, the location, the square footage, and this was lead and depending. I'm sure now it's certified, but back then it was pending. And the firm that I was working at when I was uh, working on this project. Then down here in the bottom, I wrote a little blurb about this project. It can be really simple. But one suggestion that I give you in terms of writing for your portfolio and also your resume and also your LinkedIn profile is to include a lot of numbers. So what you will see in this blurb that this building is a seven story mixed use tower with grand floor retail and 81 apartment units. I also talk about how this building extending 250 feet long in a narrow street, its materiality and massing is carefully chosen to break down the scale. Why do you need numbers? It's because numbers provide proofs and it gives architects a sense of scale of what kind of projects you have worked on. So saying that this has seven stories, saying that it has 81 apartment units, saying that it's 250 feet long, it gives the employers an idea of what scale of projects you're working on. So remember, when you're writing about your projects, writing about your responsibility and your achievements, include numbers, numbers, numbers. Under the description, I actually think this is really, really important. I know some people don't do it, but I personally like to give credits where it's due. So I have a role section where I write down every single thing that I have done for this project. So for this project, I worked on SD, DD, and CD, and VE. I also was, I was actually the only person that did BIM and Revit on this project and the renderings on this project. So I like to write down what I've actually done. So I'm not taking credits for everything that's going on this project. And so when you're applying for a job, they can clearly see what you know how to do and what you don't know how to do. I have the plan one of the floor plan, I'm not going to show all seven story floor plans, but I just took one of the typical floor of this apartment building. I have two exterior rendering shots and I have this one little diagram that explains how the facade of the building came to be. It was really from the existing building that was there and we kind of took cues from it to make this great like facade in the new building. Then the next project was an interior project. I like to show a mix of project types, especially when you're young, when you're just like exploring and don't know what kind of projects you want to do. It's good to do a mix of them and it's good to show a mix of them in your portfolio so your future employers know what kind of work you can do. This was an interior project. It was the Center for Academic Excellence at Sitton Hall. This was a pretty small project. We basically just designed this launch and I was in charge of the SDDD Revit model and renderings of this whole project. And the next one was from my first job. I again have a rendering, a plan, two interior renderings of the apartment design. The last four projects on the portfolio that I made was actually from uh, my school. So I didn't have like a wide breadth 
of projects. Like I don't have 10 or 20 projects to show. I only had three or four projects that I've worked on professionally. So I decided to add on some school projects. So this was an airport. This one was the botanical garden, my, one of my favorite projects. And this one was done actually at an internship, like a summer internship that I had during school. It was a shipping container turned into a theater. The last project I do want to show you is this one called Icon in Asbury Park. I put this project in it because it was actually a TV competition. Now the TV never aired because I think the network didn't want to take it at the end of the day. But we had a professional TV crew came to our school and did a competition during the summer to film us as students competing, designing, working in studios late and presenting our concept. It was a really, really cool experience. And I put this project in to have a conversation point for me to talk about when I'm interviewing. Whenever I get to this project during an interview, I can tell them about this really unique experience and it starts the conversation and it keeps things a little more interesting this is one tip i would give you if you have any projects that are super interesting even if the design is not amazing even if the renderings are like not that good if it came from a really unique experience that you can talk about and use it as a conversation starter in your interview by all means put it in, I think it would make for a much more interesting interview. Now that you've seen the content inside this really, really simple portfolio, wasn't it so simple? It's so easy to make. I want to give you two bonus tips on what to do when you're going to an interview that would go really well with this portfolio. Tip number one, bring one or two CD sets with you. Always bring a CD set with you, especially when you are a more technical architect. A lot of architects really struggle to show their CDs in a portfolio format, and they would try all these things on like clipping out details, clipping out plans, clipping out a whole construction set and try to fit it into the portfolio format. But there's really no reason to curate a CD set in a different format. The entire point of a CD set is that is already a curated set of drawings in a specific format. And every architect that sees a CD set will understand it, especially if you are applying for a more technical role. Trust me, most of the times, firms would rather see construction document experience than renderings. So bringing an actual CD set with you is gonna help you tremendously during an interview. Tip number two, super simple, just leave a copy of this with them after your interview. I think this is the smartest thing I've ever done is making my portfolio so small and so portable and so cheap to make. I bring a few copy with me. I actually have two copy right here. Just in case, because usually I find that Every interview that I've gone to, they always bring someone else in. And at one time I even interviewed with like four people at a table. So I always like to bring a few more copy. Also, you want to bring a few copy because at the end of the interview, you can just tell them you can take this. The great thing about this super simple work sample is because it has my resume on it and it also has all the projects that I have worked on that I've shown them. And when it comes time to reviewing the 30 people that they have interviewed for this one position, trying to decide who they should hire. They don't have to go into the computer to find your resume out of the 30 other resumes. They can just grab this and look at it and say, oh, this looks good. Let's hire this person. I remember this person because they gave me a copy of their little portfolio. I hope this video was helpful. I hope that it shows you an architecture portfolio doesn't always have to look like they come out of a sci-fi movie. It can be really simple, especially when you have a few years of experience and you're a much more technical person. I also have a much more updated version of this work sample that I can show you. If you wanna see the more updated version of this work sample, 
let me know in the comment so I can make a video for you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell so you can get more content like this in the future. And just in case no one have told you this today, you're enough. I'll see you next time.